Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Martinis with Nick. I'm sitting here tonight with Philadelphia actress, director, and dramaturg, Kitson O'Neill. Hi. <laughs> Kitson O'Neill is a Philadelphia-based actor, director, and dramaturg. As an actor, she's worked with Lantern Theatre Company, Interact Theatre Company, Gas and Electric, Acts You Playhouse, Ennis Nua, and People's Light and Theatre Company. She's directed for Interact, Shakespeare and Clark Park, and Hedgerow, and is dramaturg for Playpen and the Kennedy Center. She is currently the Artistic Associate of Interact Theatre Company and will be directing the world premiere of Emma Goidel for Orbiter 3. Yes. And tonight, she's going to help me eat this piece of apple pie. I'm going to help <laughs> Nick eat pie. <laughs> well, that already sounds dirty. So I got these exciting questions. Okay, I'm ready. And I'm... Oh, before I do a quick shout out to my wife for making this apple tart. It's delicious. It's like phenomenal. And almost gone. I see that, you like inhaled it. Well, you were busy like adjusting lights and stuff and I... I, I was. Pie was getting cold and I can't be allowed. I can't stand women who are like, I eat whatever I want. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, People who are fit, it's bullshit if they're like, oh, I don't do anything, it's just the way I am. Have you considered work as like an actuarian or something? <laughs> I'm yes. Just, I'm not kidding, yes. I'm just definitely. saying. So I could eat whatever I want? Just get like a slide rule and like a 30, 60, 90 triangle. I have no idea what actuarians use. I don't even know what that really means. It means... Uh, I'd like you figure out what for insurance companies, like what yeah. the percent, what the likelihood is you'll be killed by a truck or die of yeah. such Sounds like a great job, actually. Yeah, yeah. I could just sit in my little room, in my ugly moo, -moo doing whatever the fuck I want all day. Why can't it be a pretty moo, -moo? It would be the most beautiful moo, -moo you've ever seen. I've seen a few. <laughs> the most glamorous <laughs> moo, -moo that the insurance company that's actually With rhinestones and a cape. Seen. This is going to be so good. Ermine around I'm changing the, my yeah. life right now. Uh, you're welcome. Thanks, Nick. I will say, my work as a director has made me a much more grateful and patient actor. I was wondering. Because being a director is really, really hard and lonely. Yeah. And being an actor is so fun and collegial. And you don't realize how isolated your director is and how much they have to remove themselves from everything that's happening. Whereas an actor, especially if you're in a play with a bunch of people you love, it's like we're all going out drinking and yeah. we're all sitting through tech, shooting the shit back in the dressing room while the director's out there just like sweating bullets. So it's definitely given me more empathy for my directors. Well, if you ever want to go one more step removed, I suggest playwriting. No thanks, I'm good. In some ways, a dramaturg is like a midwife. They didn't conceive the baby, they're not going to raise the baby, but they will help you get the baby out of the womb and into the world. They collect a check and run. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah, they're huge check. They're huge fat bank fat rolls. Fat bank roll. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. they run. And then they run away. And then they're off to the next job, the next baby. So it's a little like uh, being a little ranger. Like being a midwife. Didn't even have a chance. She to gets on her horse with her cape flying behind her and runs oh, to the next Jesus. screaming woman. Midwives are boring. What? Midwives are boring. Little ranger is cool. You still only said that because you're a dude, because you clearly aren't watching. Call the midwife. Yeah, I can make up things too. That is a real TV show. Sure. And it's amazing. Call a Midwife is a real TV show, yes, please. It is. Oh, yeah, yeah. It comes on right after Feed the Pig and right before. I can't wait to get a bunch of angry letters from very, very adamant Call the Midwife. Oh, my God. I would Damn. love an angry letter. <laughs> Have you seen this show? <laughs> <laughs> What's really interesting about Orbiter 3 and what I think will be, hopefully, as in the future, like radical about what we're doing is. The playwright is not just, like, they didn't just write the play and then they're giving it to a producing organization and that producing organization is going to make the play happen. And they want you to be in the room sometimes to contribute and take notes and be there. But the playwright does. The playwright is the artistic director of the production huh. at Orbiter 3. So the final right. voice is the voice of the person who conceived the show. The show. Yeah, no good can come of that. 
I don't know. I mean, it's an awful idea. <laughs> It has been rumored that you worked as a model for a John Deere catalog. This is true. How did that come together? Um, so were you, it, were you on a tractor? It was a lawnmower. We, like it was a, a push ride lawnmower? On lawn, oh, a ride-on lawnmower, bro. Because I'm not fucking around with my John Deere catalog. <laughs> Continue. Um, I also was a model for American Leathers in a bomber jacket in front of an airplane. Not as cool as in front of an airplane, mm -hmm. like a bomber, like a World War II airplane. I don't know. I went and stood where I was told to stand. Okay. Um, Did it have a propeller? So like, uh, I don't know. It was shiny. It was very cool. You did not see the photo afterward. Yeah, I did. Oh. All I could do was look at him and be like, "Oh my god, my hair looks so weird, and my eyes are so strange, and I, you know, like, because I was a girl." Is that your Australian accent? No, that's my like critical girl accent. Do you want me to do this interview on my Australian accent? A little bit. You do, don't you? I'm gonna do my cherry time trick with my Australian accent. It's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing. Okay. Um, yeah, let's stop that right there. So I have always had a, a commercial career where I make like dumb commercials for Steakums and Las Vegas and where I do stupid catalog modeling because that's how mommy pays the rent. Like last week I did a training video for the Delaware State Police. Wow, mm -hmm. do you play a cop? Mm -hmm. And I'm a great cop if I miss it. And if I ever get pulled over for DUI, I already know all the tricks. Because that's what the training video was about. Do you remember one that you could just like, your favorite line as a cop, as a fake cop? <laughs> that training think. video? Um, yeah, sure. I asked the guy, the fellow I brought in who's drunk, yeah. if he has someone he can call and come pick him up, and he says, no, I could call my wife, but I really don't want to. I'm a cop, I'm playing loose, and he goes, well, I, I got a holding cell you could stay in, but um, it ain't too comfortable. <laughs> I just love that. It's so like, well, buddy, you could sleep <laughs> in a holding pen. Huh. But you know. Can you deal with an Australian accent? No. Your wife is amazing. Oh, I want to do an interview with your wife. Yeah, yeah. You and the rest of the Philadelphia What? Community. She's foxy. She is foxy. She knows how to cook. I know how to cook. She's clever. She's I mean, you, you just stuffed your lamb hole. That's true. It was delicious. I made pita bread from scratch. You did. It was amazing. Well, this pie is pretty wonderful. This pie is great. It is where yeah. And it's already on. Yeah. And I'm doing all the talking and I've still eaten all of it. That's how good it is. Well. The, the, it's your multi-talented. You're, mm -hmm. like you're like a such and such. <laughs> Disgusting. 2012, mm -hmm. you started in a movie called 200,000 Dirty with Coolio. Oh, I sure did. How can you possibly expect that to fit inside anyone's brain? Oh my god. Let me tell you about this movie. <laughs> I wish you would. Oh. You could watch it on Netflix. Available on streaming on Netflix and Hulu right now. 200,000 200, dirty. 200, dirty. And I'm only in the beginning of the dirty. movie, so you're, you can only, you only have to watch like the first one. Which is actually 225,000 Australian. You're a funny guy. We're shooting this movie. If you ever watch the movie, you'll be like, whoa, Kitson's wearing like nothing. And she's beating a, a guy in an Indian suit with a rabbit. You're like, what the hell is happening in this film? So I'm wearing this like dominatrix outfit. I've been painted by the makeup artist from Cirque du Soleil. And then I have a fight out in a parking lot. And Coolio, his part in this scene is just to sit in this car. And then the lead guy in the movie goes and gets in the car and they drive away. So he's on set with me the whole day. And at the end of, you know, he's very charming and congenial. And at the end of the shooting, he was like, that was amazing, you're great. And I had this crazy hairstyle, not dissimilar to Coolio's hairstyle. And he was like, you're like my girl. Like, you and me, like, we should go out in the town. And I was like, ah, ha, ha, ha. He's like, no, really. Like, after shooting had wrapped, he's like, let's go out. I'll take you around Vegas. And I was like, oh, well, I mean, we, we have been on set all day, and I'm very tired, but why don't you let me go and, like, wash, and then um, we'll see. And I went back to my hotel and took a shower, and at, like, 11 o'clock, Coolio calls my hotel room, and he's like, so are we going out? I get my Hummer, let's go. I was like, I'm really pooped, man. I'm just gonna stand and watch Law and Order. Right? I'm the lamest person who ever lived. I could have gone out on the town with Coolio in Las Vegas 
And instead, I was like, I'm just gonna lie here and watch old Law and Order episodes in my bathrobe. <laughs> Loser. It's easy for us inside of our art to look at all the like volume of things we go to and be like, no, this didn't add up and this wasn't worthy and this was racist and this was this and this was sexist bullshit. And that might be true. And then we say, I only saw two shows last year that were amazing. Well, sure, because you went to see like everything. And when you go to the PMA, you're like, well, look at all this amazing art. Art is so good. Well, yeah, because you're not seeing all the junk. It's already been called out. You're only seeing the good stuff. But we see a lot more stuff. We see a higher volume. So it's not all going to be the quality that we crave. To me, theater sucks. I'll tell you when it sucks. It sucks when it's clear that all the actors over there are just doing the show for a paycheck. I don't care if it's the most beautiful production you've ever seen, with the most amazing production values, and the most incredible concept, and a million dollars spent on it. If those people are just making their way through the paces because they're just collecting a paycheck, then fuck that bullshit. That sucks. But if those people are up there genuinely attempting to tell a story that means something, and to do something that will provoke, or excite, or disgust, or thrill, or break hearts, or bring joy, then it doesn't suck. It might not be perfect, it might not be as intellectually exciting as you want it to be, but it doesn't suck. I think the, yeah, I think most of the time when I go to see a show, everyone is really genuinely attempting to do that. Across the board, actors, writers, sound designers. I don't know about the sound designers. Yeah, I know what you mean. No, um... There's kind of... Yeah, dicey. I do. I mean, none of us are making any fucking money. We're all miserable. <laughs> We're super stressed out. So there's hardly anybody who's doing it because they're just making their way through the motions in order to collect their paycheck. That rarely happens in our community. Does everybody always do it with the rigor that I would like? With the intellectual and the artistic rigor that I crave? No. There are things I crave that I don't always see. But I think that the intent is often very pure. Thanks again for wasting your morning before starting your work watching one of the crappy episodes of Martinez with Nick. <laughs> I want to thank again my... Uh, way to promote yourself. That's right. Amazing. My special guest here, uh, Kitson O'Neill. Thanks again for coming out here. It's my pleasure. We'll do a little final... Yeah. Cheers. Mosterovia. And uh, make sure you stay tuned after the credits to see Kitson O'Neill's Secret Talent. <laughs> I'm having performance anxiety. I'm a look. I had no idea people did that for real. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> did you ever know that you're my <laughs> hero? We've got a holding cell you could stay in, but it isn't too comfortable. <laughs>